Well, looking back over 10 years, uh, it's quite an interesting process. One tries to think as to how the whole thing started. Uh, they say that every good idea has got several parents and it's impossible to identify exactly when something happens. But my recollection is that the initiative of the Sports Commission came about partly because the states were going to change the way they manage their affairs after the review of the machinery of government. So the old recreation committee was no longer going to be there. We brought about partly by the fact that the Ireland Games came and we listened to a whole range of other islands as to how they organise sports development in their respective islands. And then I think we were lucky that maybe three people got together. Uh, Dave Chilton, who was then made the first Chief Officer of Culture and Leisure. But Graham Chester had been involved in sports development with the old Recreation Committee. And I was lucky enough to be a non-states member on that Recreation Committee. I think the three of us, if you like, came up with the idea with that background of saying, let's give it a go. So here we are 10 years later, the Sports Commission has grown in stature. It's, it's a larger organisation than we started. It has a bigger budget. And uh, by many people's point of view, it has had some success in helping Guernsey Sports uh, get to a new level. Our first Sports Awards evening was a joint affair with the outgoing Guernsey Sports Council at which we inducted our first 10 Guernsey Sporting Heroes. Andy Prio was also the inaugural winner of the Guernsey Sports Commission Performer of the Year trophy. 2005 saw the beginning of the Youth Games which was another one of Ches's fabulous ideas that he then gave me to sort out. The idea behind the Games was to allow everybody uh, in year five and six to try a sport that they hadn't tried before, something that they may not normally do at school. And I wanted to allow them to experience uh, a competition setting and, and, a, and a parade, the victory parade with medals, so that everybody could have that experience and feel that high of uh, and the buzz of doing really well in a competition. With Stuart Fallout pursuing a career in politics, the time he was able to give to the Sports Commission became more precious. Whilst continuing as a commissioner, Stuart moved aside and John Greenfield became chairman of the Guernsey Sports Commission for the next couple of years. In 2006, I was employed by the Guernsey Sports Commission as their first community sports development officer. It was an ideal job for me to come back to the island. I'd been working as a community police officer in the UK. We've been doing um, sport with the kids on the estate and we knew that it was really engaging with them. So on my first day, I came into the office and sat down with Chesie and said, so what do you want me to do? And he said, well, here's a blank piece of paper. Pretty much do whatever you like, which is obviously a dream for any job. And um, the second question was, how do you think that you're going to engage young people? And I said, well, I'm going to go down to the estates and I'm going to play sport with them. And you could have heard a pin drop. It was like, you're going to what? You're going to go down to the estates and play sport with young people? And I said, well, yeah, how else am I going to engage with them? And that's what we did. And I had the support from Adam Farish at the Action for Children. We went down with some basketballs and we took it from there. 2006 and we were into new shoes. Uh, this was um, an initiative to encourage women and girls to take part in, in sport, to either take up a sport or to increase their participation. Over the years, the Guernsey Sports Commission, whether it's been their staff or commissioners themselves, have been involved in several fundraising initiatives, including this one at Hope Bell School in 2007 for Comic Relief. In 2007, we wanted to try giving young people an opportunity to have a go at new sports for free during half term. So we organised some um, badminton, some football, and a three on three basketball tournament where young people could have a go and there were medals given out to all the winners. 2007 and we moved from the packing shed, as I like to call it, uh, into our final offices at the coach house where the commission still has its HQ today. Although I did have to negotiate with Jason Shambrook from cricket, he needed a kettle, I needed a quick cricket set, so we did a swap. So in 2007 we were lucky enough to get the support of a local sponsor and buy a huge inflatable football pitch which was 25 metres by 10 metres. It was such an attractive thing for young people to get involved with, we were really lucky to get the sponsorship for that. 
And we decided to run a football um, tournament to launch it up at Sunray Park. And uh, the very one and only Matt Letissier came along to help us launch. So the young people came up and had a game with a, an ex-footballer, which was quite an attraction for them. Um, the pitch is brilliant. It's quite heavy, but we got around that with manpower. And I understand that the pitch is still being used today. The Stepping Out initiative started in 2007 and ran for several years. The idea behind this initiative was to improve children's overall fitness and we targeted year six. We gave all the children in year six uh, pedometers which they then kept for three or four months. We tested them at the start of the initiative by running the bleep test with them and then we did the same again at the end and we checked their results to see if they had improved their fitness over that time. And as a bit of an incentive, because the bleep test certainly isn't an incentive, but as a bit of an incentive, we gave an award to the school uh, for the most steps over that period of time. And that was fun counting those up. In 2008, Becky Wayne and Ryan French joined our team as community sports development officers to help us with the new initiatives that we now have firmly entrenched within our programme. Another one of our exciting projects was the development of a ball court down at the Boa Estate. They didn't have any um, leisure play equipment really down there and we wanted to engage them in basketball like we had done at the Gene. So we managed to get sponsorship from a local bank to get a hard uh, concrete ball court um, installed um, and we started our evening sessions down there as well as at the Gene Estate. Um, that installation led to the future development of the um, Gene basketball court from half court into a full court which again is being used um, still today for the street sport programme. 2009 there was the mad initiative of the year four mornings which involved 700 children coming up to Beau Sejour over two mornings and getting 15 or 16 sports, different sports involved with their coaches to give the children an opportunity to try a different sport that they might not do in school. In 2010 Bill Spurdle and Richard Flip Lefleng were inducted as Guernsey Sporting Heroes in recognition of their professional football careers. 2011 saw the first set of women's only taster sessions offered. We offered a range of different sports and activities in a women only setting and the aim of it was to then try and get them to take something up on a long term basis. In 2011, the Brooks McDonald High Performance Programme was established. The aims being to support highly skilled and motivated athletes continue on their journey towards full-time professional careers. The main aim of the programme is to ensure that being from Guernsey is an advantage rather than a disadvantage. In 2011, the PE in Schools team was formed with myself and Ollie Dowling, where we did a PE to Year 3 and 4 children across the island. The main emphasis of the PE in Schools programme is to provide children with a positive first experience whilst also giving teachers confidence and knowledge to put into their MP lessons. The Get Active Fortnight was first run in 2011. Um, the Get Active Fortnight aims to get everyone of all kind of walks of life active. Um, we do that through offering free taster sessions in different sports and fitness activities. 2011 also saw the introduction of fit clubs to years one and two at lunchtime and year three and four after school. 2012 witnessed a rebrand of the Guernsey Sports Commission's logo, website and social media networks. The website currently serves as the main platform in which we can tell our audience about our programmes and initiatives, also spreading the word about our 49 different member sports. The website currently attracts over 100 different visitors every day and so far the visitors have come from over 120 different countries. The Guernsey Sports Commission's High Performance Centre was opened in April 2012, the objective being to provide our top sports people with a facility to focus on their strength and conditioning in a performance environment. The Girls Convention has been run for a number of years now. The aims of the event are to provide an opportunity for Year 9 girls that currently aren't involved with any sport or activity um, to come along for the day and really get inspired and try a range of different sports that we hope then that they will find that one that they can take up on a long-term basis. In 2012, we introduced teacher training opportunities delivered by the Guernsey Sports Commission. We're continually looking to offer courses to schools and teachers so they can gain more knowledge and confidence that they can put into their own PE lessons. 
The Olympic torch visited Guernsey in 2012, and for the two hours it was here in the Bailiwick, it did a tour of the seafront in St Peterport. Torchbearers included Rob Smart, Ross Allen and Paul Diligent. Crowds turned out in their thousands to witness a glimpse of the Olympic torch. 2012 saw the first Bedell Volunteers Week. Bedell Volunteers Week aims to recognise and celebrate local sports volunteers. Volunteers Week is fantastic because it highlights all of the volunteers with their sport that are just invaluable. Um, without them, sport just wouldn't happen. In 2012, we hosted the first Guernsey Sports Commission Performance Conference. In 2013, we built on that to further support our coaches working with our high-performance athletes, increased our numbers with the pinnacle being a keynote speech from Matthew Syed. The Youth Games continues to offer children in years 5 and 6 every two years the opportunity to try a new sport. Last year, 2013, we had 18 sports, three of which were new. We had sailing, speedball and badminton were new. And it's a great opportunity for children to really get out there and try something new that they've never had the opportunity to try before. We also administer the Sports Guernsey Fund, which is part of the events group of the Culture and Leisure Department. Last year, events included badminton, cricket, hockey, volleyball. Street Sports continues to offer young people um, of 11 to 18 years of age uh, the opportunity to uh, do sports free of charge in their local communities. Um, we have three sessions um, per week, 50 weeks a year. It's a chance for them to be active, have fun, socialise, play sports and learn new skills. Leading on from the success of the celebration of sport which followed the Olympic torch relay, 2013 saw the Sports Commission organise their first Sports Seafront Sunday. We closed the seafront for the whole day and 15 different sports clubs helped showcase the variety of different sports that are available to try on island. From have-a-go activities to obstacle courses to showcases, lots of different activities were available on the day. In 2013 we added our latest two Guernsey sporting heroes in Mary Russell Vick from hockey and Carl Hester from dressage. One of the things that we found back in 2012, really as a legacy of the Olympic and Paralympic Games, was that there was a, a lack of availability of opportunities for people with disabilities wanting to access sports. So through a local sponsor helping us, we were able to launch the Disability Coaching Programme, uh, which has just started now with our very first workshop for coaches, uh, for various people involved in sport, including um, all the sports uh, development officers as well. For the last few years, and in 2014 and beyond, we've been offering coaches, administrators and athletes the chance to upskill and continue their professional development by attending a number of different workshops. Workshops offered previously include those from Sports Coach UK and St John's Ambulance. The Quidsden programme continues to offer children in primary school and secondary school the opportunity to play sport in the holidays for just £1 a session. Activities have included fun and fit club, multi-sports, basketball, surfing, archery and fishing. We have seven athletes on the Rising Stars programme from six different sports. The aim being to support our athletes on an Olympic pathway or into full-time professional careers with a more focused level of individual support. Coach 5 has been in going to sporting uh, vernacular for 75 years. It was set up in, to commemorate the, the life of King George V and on his death something like 200 of these places were set up around uh, the UK. It's owned by trustees and, and the bailiff is the uh, head of the chairman of the trustees and KG5 was going through some poor times and uh, it was the Sports Commission that the then bailiff contacted to say is there any way you could have a look at this and see if you could come up with a, a, a plan to help uh, bring it back to the vibrancy and, uh, and, and uh, sporting excellence that it was once known for. We've come up with a scheme, it, it's now part way to being uh, delivered. Uh, phase one is completed and is being uh, in great use. Uh, phase two has been approved by the planners now, so that should start within the uh, next six or eight weeks' time, uh, sometime around uh, middle of May perhaps. And phase three is now being developed and the drawings are being worked on with the architects. The Sports Commission remains a voice for sport here on Guernsey. This video has showcased just some of the programmes, initiatives and events that we have delivered here on island. Here's to the next ten years.